So in the end, I did do the uh, zinc, it says zinc carbonate, but it's actually just uh, a little bit of the zinc oxide and I put in some citric acid. Now, what I did with this is I sampled it, put a little bit of citric acid in, and then sampled it and checked the pH. Uh, I was going for trying to get as acidic as I could without it getting to the point where I was afraid it was going to start eating the copper oxide on me. So I was aiming for a pH of around, say, like five or so. Um, and so I can test that just to uh, be sure that we still have that. It was funny because since it did start off as a carbonate, it actually did bubble when uh, when I started putting in the citric acid. So, which is about what I was expecting was going to happen, I guess. All right, but we'll take a little bit of this. And we'll put it on there and see if we still have... Sounds maybe weakened a little bit, but it's still not too bad. Um, yeah, actually, I mean, it's around a five, so that's actually pretty good. That's really about what I want it to be. I don't want to get any more acidic than that if I can help it. And you got to keep in mind that when it was the carbonate, it was around like an 11. So there's a pretty significant decrease in that. Now... <clears throat> I, so I know I've got a solution, and again, the idea is that the higher acidity gives more solubility for the uh, zinc in this, and the price I have to pay for it is just that I'm going to have to use a higher temperature to convert it back to the uh, zinc oxide, but that's not really that big of an issue. So, very first thing I need to do in order to make this is to take this sheet of copper here and I am going to oxidize this and I want to oxidize it to the point where it's going to become black um, and what I found is that the best way to do that is to get the copper till it's just cherry red uh, and sometimes I have to do that a couple of times to get it thick enough and it seems to adhere well enough when it does that so that's what we will try right now, and then after that, we can try doing the uh, putting on some of that solution, letting that dry, and then uh, cooking that off into the uh, zinc oxide. So, I'll go ahead and do the oxidation here. to not try to focus on something else. Yeah. So you can see here that that's a nice, very matte black color on it. So that is a, uh, that's what I'm looking for. So now what I need to do is I need to start putting the uh, drops of the liquid on it to let it evaporate. And what I've been doing for that 
just to speed things up is I've been using this just chunk of steel here that I just heat up with the blowtorch to get it warm enough uh, that I can encourage the evaporation faster. Otherwise, it takes quite a long time. So just uh, hit that with the torch for a minute here and get it warm enough. And warm enough in this case means that I'm going to watch for when the condensation evaporates on this. Oh, actually, one thing I do need to do first. Um, so this is at the, a certain pH, so I can calculate what the concentration is based on that. Uh, and then I needed to dope this. And I'm using sodium chloride, so basically table salt, to dope that. And, you know, when you're doing doping, you really want a very small amount. And so really what I'm going for is something like that. Let me see if I can zoom in. If only it would focus. There we go. So you see, basically one grain of salt. That's what I'm putting in there. I've actually already done that, so I'm not going to do any more. So let's warm this up and then can go ahead and do the evaporations. call it modern art now. All right. And so I'm going to put this on here. And now I'm just using, you know, a micro pipe header here. Not really for any particular reason other than the fact that I've got a little more control over how much I drop in here. And because ideally, I'd like to be able to get it in a spot, but it almost inevitably spreads out. Um, so that's actually not too bad right there. Uh, and so I'm going to look for that to evaporate. So this actually is pretty close to the ideal because what I want is something that isn't going to spread out too much so I can maintain a good concentration. The fact that this is a little more acidic means that it should minimize this kind of coffee staining effect that tends to happen. Um, so it's, don't really know how to explain that. I, from what I was reading, it's something to do with the pH changes the, I don't know if it changes the surface tension, but it changes the way in which the uh, material within the droplet circulates while it's evaporating. So it's a kind of complicated circumstance. Uh, and so the higher or rather the lower the pH, the less likely it's going to transport and concentrate at the edges and giving you that sort of classic non-uniform distribution where you have a lot of it on the edge and much less in the middle. And that's looking actually like it's probably already dried. So I'm going to get another drop just for good measure and frankly to push my luck. Oh no, I guess it hadn't dried because it didn't look like it re-wet things, but we'll leave it at that. And I think what we can do is just 
wait a little while for this to dry up and then we can do the next step. All right, that actually did not take as long as I thought it was going to. Uh, so it's now dried up and you can see that there is this film here. And you know, if you look carefully at it, you can see that there is still some concentration at the edges, but the middle is pretty uniform. I'm pretty happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back in the torch and I'm going to heat it up again just incandescent and then let it cool down. Uh, and at that point that will, so this is a zinc citrate with a very small amount of sodium chloride in it. And when I'm done with that part step there, it'll be back to zinc oxide with sodium and chlorine ions in the zinc oxide matrix uh, and basically acting as a dopant. And the zinc oxide should also be very sort of intimately bonded to the uh, copper two oxide. would be plenty to be able to get it to uh, to do this. Probably not going to want to focus, is it? Come on, you can do it. There we go. So close. Ah, uh, well, we'll try it again. Maybe I'll just take a still picture of it. But you can see that... Uh, there has been a color change. And so this has basically been oxidized now. So finally, after many, many tries, I have a working diode here. Doesn't look like much, but I'll explain what it is. But the proof that it's a diode is right up here. So I am applying an AC voltage across a diode and a resistor and what you're seeing here is this is the source voltage and this is the rectified voltage coming up. So that right there is the best evidence that it's a diode. And if you're wondering about the ice block, well, the reason for that is because it may be a diode and it may actually have decent quality to it, but it seems to have uh, some excess thermal uh, carrier generation. And uh, again, I can explain that a little bit more later, but it is a definite functional diode. The other proof that this is a diode is this current voltage curve here, because what you can see is that on the left-hand side, which is going to be a negative bias, it's showing a fair amount of resistance. And on the positive side, it's actually showing this exponential upward curve. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and capture a trace and now I'm going to take the diode off of the uh, ice block and <clears throat> what we should see with time is that the IV is going to change there'll be more current passing through and the reason for that is simply because there is the excess heat that's going into this now 
is making more electron holes that electron hole pairs that can be uh, contributed to the conductivity. Uh, and so this is expected behavior that you would see. And that may just be a matter that it's warming up only so slowly, uh, but you can definitely see a change in there. And importantly, if you look, the change is bigger in the forward bias than it is in the reverse bias, which again is something that's to be expected.